the internet was supposed to be a big shrinker in, in world terms, but you don't oh, think that's... Oh, no, it, it definitely has, actually. Um, it definitely has. It's become a lot easier for people to self-release things, but it takes a lot of money. You know, what a lot of people are doing are putting their music on iTunes and Spotify and things, and that's great. But you need to promote it as well, and that's that's virtually impossible to do in a DIY way. I think. You have to pay for the promotion company, which they can cost anywhere between one thousand two thousand pounds. But if you get the money together, the, it's possible to do to self-release things and do quite well. I think a good local example of that is um, um, Howard James Kenny. Um, he's he self-released his album and, and he paid he paid for a promotion company to promote it. And because of that he managed to get a booking agent. And then he managed to get on all these great tours and all these great supports and he's, he's constantly playing around the UK and he sold loads of copies of the album and does really well. And he, he made that money back, that investment, that just over a thousand pounds investment back really quick. You know, if you if you could produce an album for uh, less than a pound and sell it for ten pounds online. You, can, you need to sell just over a hundred albums to be able to make your money back. It's, it's definitely worth doing, but it's a, it's a big investment for start with. Is there any sort of a couple of bands like that where you're sort of going, they were really, good. they really had something they should have made? Um, there was a band called Great Eskimo Hoax that I really liked. I kind of tried to release a few records myself, but I put out an EP of theirs. I thought they were they were really interesting. Uh, they were really, I thought they could have done really well. They got a lot of they got a lot of help and a lot of following after after a while. They their the EP that I released by them was was recorded by the guys from Falls. The guys from Falls put the uh, kind of really liked them and, uh, and let them play with them at quite a few shows and things. So I thought they were gonna they were gonna go somewhere and do quite well, but they never did. <laughs> Uh, a few people have done quite well out of Worcester, I think. Going back to uh, my friend Ben Power, who was in my band, he, he's obviously doing uh, Fuck Buttons and a solo project called uh, Blank Mass, and he's doing really well. He's a full time musician, and you know, he's making a living out of uh, releasing records, so that's great. So, what are your hopes for the sort of, um, next couple of years? What are your plans? My plans? Well, um, I see the sound engineering is going pretty well. Um, I, as well as the Mars Buck, I'm a freelance sound engineer. I also, I'm also a touring engineer as well. And I go out on tour with a, um, a band called Male Bonding and a band called Cheaters. And um, uh, I, I, I engineer them. On, I've been able to go out to America and all around Europe with them and stuff, so that's really good. Uh, they've, they've both got new albums coming out in the beginning of next year, so next year looks to be really busy as far as travelling with, with those two guys. Four of us are working on doing some more, uh, promoting some more gigs under the name of Task in Hand again, which is, which is I've kind of all used for various club nights and a shop and other events that I've organised in the past. Um, we're hopefully going to do some more shows again in the new year. Trying to making sure we, that we bring in an out of town touring band, someone that's touring the UK, uh, and then get a couple of local bands to support them. You think that's important? important to I think it's really important. Yeah. I think um, it's it's really important to see what else is going out on outside the UK, outside of Worcester, you know, and give people the opportunity to play in front of someone who's. Who's, who's kind of semi-made it and is doing really well. The first show that I've done in a couple of years, last October, and um, uh, a band called This Town Needs Guns. And you obviously have to, you have to they, they ask for a guarantee, you have to be able to give them that, so you have to get a certain amount of people through the door. We managed to break even, which was great, and the night was just, uh, it was one of the best nights I've had in Worcester in so long. The crowd were just incredible. They were, Sometimes you, you try and put on a show and people, the, the same old local bands play. They're, they're, there's great local bands, but sometimes they, they, they play two or three times a month. And it, it's, it's, it's like, what, why, why should I come and see you again? You know, like, I enjoy it, but 
you know, what's that? And, and a lot of people kind of, I get the feeling that a lot of gigs, people just will go and support them, but then spend most of the time just drinking and chatting. I, I find the problem is it's not, it's it's the fact that the whole the whole night is the same night. Yeah. I don't mind going and seeing the same band if I'm getting two different support bands. But yeah. Like, but what really puts me off is when I see the same three bands out of four on this one and then yeah. another variation of the Well that's four what happens, you get, you get one promoter and he's got a bunch of friends and then it, it, he'll put on a night and then he'll put on a, another night with a different list of bands but then he'll, the third show will just be the other bands again and like a mix match of that. So then you get, you just get promoters putting on the same bands in each, you don't get much cross I think. That's why you need to be able to be put on these out of town bands. It forces people to think, right, these play this kind of music, who am I going to get to support? I'm not just going to put my friends on, I'm going to get people that will work, that will bring in the right crowd to come and see, to come and witness. Is it acceptable for musicians to have to pay to go and play such places? They're, they're the worst places, you avoid them. <laughs> and that, I think London's the worst for that as well, because, the, because like you talked about earlier, if you want to make it seem to have to go to London, they seem to just play on that, don't they? There's lots of pay to play places where you have to put a deposit down and if you don't get a certain amount of people through the door, um, you, you, you don't get your money back or you won't get paid. Well, if if I wanted to play in front of all my friends, I'd just stay in Worcester and do that. Why would I bring them all to London? That's not the point. I'm coming to the, your place to play in front of different people. Your job is your job title is a promoter, so promote it, get people there. <laughs> I was going to ask you, um, so somebody like me that doesn't fully understand uh, how music is made and things, um, I wondered whether you wanted to ever go into producing, and are the skills the same? Because to me, it looks like you've got a guy behind a mixing desk in one, and a guy behind a mixing desk in the other. Yeah. Is it a totally different skill? Um, it. Starts, it starts very similar when you kind of in the early stages of training. And when I was younger, uh, I was doing live sound engineering, and that's what I, like I said before that's what I always wanted to do. But uh, I also did a bit of studio engineering, I still help out people now and again. But it got to the point when I realized you realize it's they're so they're both so different, they're both really, really different skills to learn to master. They're, 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 you can you can you can transfer them one to the other in the early stages, but if you want to master at it, it's one or the other. So can you I, give us an example? Okay, so uh, live sound engineering a lot of the time, depending on the bands, um, but you know, majority of the time it's live rock music. You know, the majority of bands out there are uh, bass, drums, guitars. So you, you've got to work. You've got, you've got to work within this, you've got this PA to work with, and you've got to try and make everything as clear as possible, uh, whilst also kind of making everything as loud as possible. Um, so, um, you try and fit everything into gaps, you kind of have to imagine, like you've got the subs at the bottom, and then you've got the tops and the tops and the mids all in between, and you kind of have to start thinking about, right, I'm going to stick the kick drum there, maybe a little bit on there and then the guitars there and the vocals up here uh, and uh, you know you EQ everything um, to make that work and like a good example is like acoustic guitar or, or, or keyboards like a piano sound if you've got a full ba band playing you, 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 you make the most keyboards playing by itself and make it sound absolutely beautiful you know, loads of bottom end, loads of top end, everything as soon as you just try and put that in a mix with everything else, live it just sounds really muddy and gets really lost you need to kind of like place it somewhere so you kind of get rid of lots of lots of maybe the low end or you know, you get rid of lots of stuff to, to give it its own place so it doesn't interfere with everything else but then if everybody else stops playing and just listen to that you start thinking, oh it doesn't sound so good so a lot of the time you're not trying to make the instrument sound great, you're trying to make it fit into a space when studio engineering is, is a lot, you have, to, you have to be, it's a lot about uh, mic choice, room choice, room position and getting everything to sound perfect and then levelling it and then getting it levelled out. Um, 
so it's a completely different, it's a completely different skill. You know, I could, I can't go into the studio now and make something sound great. You know, make a piano sound great for a, a record, but I can make it work for a live situation. You know, and when it's in the studio, it becomes louder when you go through the mastering process, and it, you know, it, 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 it squashes everything together, but still keeps the clarity. When you don't, you don't have that line, you can't do that. You can't start using loads of compressors over the and limiters over the, the, the front house mix. You've got, to, you've got to let people have control and go up and down and go quiet and loud. And, yeah. I'm going to listen to live actors totally different now because I'm yeah. thinking about where where they where they put it. Yeah, yeah. There. I like to, I like to think of it that way. I like to like kind of place them in a speaker almost sometimes. And, and it's it's mainly for like the louder rock band. If it's an acoustic act, you, it, it, it is a bit different. You've got a lot more space in the speakers. You know, you can. So you just make it really sound really nice. And do they frequently go against your instructions and drive you bonkers? Uh, some some do, but I don't I don't let it get to me. You know, some engineers. Uh, I think I find a lot of work because I'm, I'm quite friendly, and I, I think that's not quite unheard of in engineers sometimes. Um, I don't know why. Um, I think I think a lot of them are quite bitter because maybe they're failed musicians. I get on with bands really well. I'd, I you have to you have to try and come up with a compromise sometimes. Um, sometimes a band play on a guy plays on stage. He's brought a, a you know like a large Marshall stack and he wants to crank it up because that's the sound he likes. And I say to him, well, that's too loud. I can't hear anything else. Is there any way you can turn it down? No, because it won't sound the same. Now, because I play as well, I understand what he's talking about. I'm not just going to start arguing with him and saying turn it down. Shut up and turn it down. You know, I, I know what he means, so you have to try and call it a compromise.